My name is Patricia Rodriguez and I am a assistant professor of politics. My uncle was in, uh, when we lived in Chile, uh, he was a, um, a member of the economic team of Salvador Allende who was a socialist uh, president in Chile in from 1970 to 1973. And he was, uh, in 1973, um, deposed through a military coup uh, that was very brutal and violent. And he, um, I mean, I was, I was only five at the time that it happened, but the family uh, suffered some uh, persecution because he refused to, uh, to leave Chile. He didn't believe that, 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 that anything was going to happen, that everything was going to be okay. And he stayed in, in Chile um, hiding in friends' houses and, and attics and all that. And um, so that sort of made it so that um, when he finally uh, sought exile in uh, the Mexican embassy, uh, that like it, there was a, like a five month period in, in which he was just um, in hiding, and that made it so that a lot of police and military forces would, you know, knock on our door, and um, and so then my dad just uh, had requested already a transfer to Brazil, um, and so that's how, how we ended up in Brazil. The rest of my family in Mexico, and some stayed in Chile. But I guess the political activism, like I, I just always wanted to understand. Um, what, why, the, you know, why this happened to my family and to Chile um, and to um, someone sort of seeking change uh, in a good way, I think. Um, and then when I moved to, to Brazil, Brazil at the time was also under dictatorship, but not as brutal as the Chilean one. Um, and so growing up in Brazil was really interesting because you, I wanted to make sense of uh, why the dictatorship was still there and as a high school student um, I uh, got together with a, f a couple friends of mine who had cameras um, and went to because I lived in the capital city in, in Brazil, Brasilia and during 1985 there was a transition from uh, dictatorship to democracy in uh, Brazil and I wanted to be part of it, and I, you know, took these these friends um, to the Congress in front of Congress, a skip school. Um, went to in front of Congress and began to interview people, um, and it was really interesting because there was a lot of hope. Um, but during the the transcourse of like maybe three hours, the whole crowd that was gathered there learned that the president had some kind of medical situation and then in the aftermath of that that he died mm -hmm. and so it went from like hope to uh, a lot of uncertainty and so I, I wanted to understand that and I wanted to kind of be part of understanding why there's so many, so much inequality in Brazil and so then I became involved with the student movement um, in Brazil and that sort of was very interesting and uh, I, I guess that's kind of like the reason why I think um, activism is important because it brings change and uh, even though it's difficult, um, it's necessary and it brings different voices to the foreground. So because I teach a lot of uh, po uh, Latin American politics courses, um, courses on issues of development, courses of, on issue of human rights, um, and I, I know I've kind of connected to um, a lot of activists, not just here in town, but, but uh, elsewhere. Um, I know that every year there's a, there is a, uh, a protest, a huge protest at the school, uh, in front of the School of the Americas in Columbia, uh, Columbus, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And the School of the Americas is essentially um, a military training facility that trains police officers and, and military officers um, from Latin America uh, in counterinsurgency type of tactics and in the mid-1990s it was discovered that they were also getting trained in torture techniques there's a torture manual so this is like public information and, and is known um, and so s ever since then but like before that even uh, there's a big movement um, that tries to bring attention to the fact that like why is the school here why are they training people especially in, in uh, situations of torture 
And a lot of these uh, military leaders have gone uh, back to their countries and have been tied to um, massacres um, and um, brutal brutality, right, um, against civilians. And, and so I think that bringing attention to that through the courses and the fact that we have this protest, I think it's important for students to, to participate in this. Many of the issues that I um, defend, I guess, and that I really believe in, I think, uh, pertain uh, to social justice issues. Um, and we can't understand, I think, uh, social justice issues without sort of being really involved and really t talking to people mm -hmm. um, and getting different perspectives um, and understanding why is it that activists do what they do. Um, and then you can, you know, you can decide for yourself. It's like, is that too crazy or is that like something that I believe in, right? But without actually kind of like experiencing um, these events and these protests and uh, standing up for something you believe in, I think uh, it makes it very hard to, to be engaged. And I think that students need to be engaged. Uh, it's like the future generation that uh, can bring change about. And I think that is why I do it. You run these risks, but I think that uh, the sense of collectivity in activism um, will sort of back you up, you know, like we'll, uh, there's something there that uh, about the networking and about the support that other activists can bring um, that to me is like uh, something that I find interesting and important.